Dextrose is a sugar that is very often used in Italian gelato. But why do we use it and what is its effect in gelato? That's what I want to find out today. Welcome to this new video of the Gelato Expert Academy. I'm Luca Musolesi and today we will make some experiments to better understand how dextrose affects the texture and the taste of Italian gelato. Dextrose is the commercial name of glucose, or more specifically of D-glucose, which is a monosaccharide used by our body and brain as a source of energy. Industrially, dextrose is produced starting from starch, usually corn starch, but also other sources can be used like potato, wheat, tapioca and more. Commercially, we can find two types of dextrose. One is called anhydrous and another one is called monohydrate. Uh, but for the use in gelato, any of these two types can be used almost without any difference. The main characteristics of dextrose are that it's less sweet than sucrose and it has a much lower molecular weight than sucrose, which means it has a stronger capacity of decreasing the freezing point of a solution or, for example, of our uh, gelato mix. So if we start with a recipe containing sucrose and we replace part of it with dextrose, in theory we will obtain a formulation with lower sweetness and a lower freezing point. Without going too in-depth in this, this also means that we will get smaller ice crystals during the freezing phase of the gelato. And you probably know that small ice crystals mean smooth and creamy texture. If you want to learn more about the theory of sugars in gelato, you can subscribe to the Gelato Expert Academy. But now let's just make some practical tests and discuss the results. What we want to do is to start with a simple gelato recipe containing only sucrose as a sugar. And then we will replace part of the sucrose with dextrose. So we will start with a recipe with 19% of sucrose and then we will have 16% of sucrose and 3% of dextrose, then 12% of sucrose and 7% of dextrose, and finally 9% of sucrose and 10% of dextrose. Now, we are going to prepare these four mixes and then freeze them and measure some parameters. What we can measure is the overrun, just out of the batch freezer, of course, and then we will blast chill the samples and after 24 hours we will measure the hardness and, of course, make a sensory evaluation. Finally, we can repeat the hardness measurement and the sensory evaluation after 72 hours. Another test that we can perform is a melting analysis. Now, let's have a look at our recipes and their differences and parameters, especially the freezing point and the content of sugars. Okay, let's first have a look in our Gelato Passport Plus app at the recipe that we are going to use for the test. So we have milk, cream and sucrose, then we will have dextrose when we change, and then no maltodextrin for now, and skim milk powder and a normal stabilizer for gelato. So you see this is pretty much a standard recipe, where we have around 9% of fat and uh, almost 25% of formulation sugars, which include the lactose, of course. So in our standard test, we will have 19% of sucrose, and then we will replace it uh, with uh, dextrose uh, little by little. So the formulation parameters, uh, the most important, you can see the freezing point is minus 2.97, or if you want to see the pack is around 250, and uh, the total solids uh, are a little bit above uh, 38%. This is the first recipe that we put uh, here, and we have 19% uh, of sucrose and 0% of dextrose. Then in the next sample, we will have 16% of sucrose and 3% of uh, dextrose, and this will affect uh, uh, mostly the freezing point or the PAC. So we will go down to minus 3.20 instead of minus 2.97. Then in the next one where we have 12% uh, of uh, sucrose and 7% of dextrose, we will uh, basically keep a similar uh, amount of sugars and solids, just uh, a little bit less because it's a uh, dextrose monohydrate, so there's a little component of uh, water and then the freezing point will lower again at minus 3.5. Then for the final test we will go with 9% of sucrose and 10% of dextrose. And here again we just lower a little bit more the total solids, we keep the same fat, similar amount of sugars of course, and we lower again 
the freezing point uh, up to minus 3.72 or uh, we increase the PAC of course. So now uh, these are the recipes, let's prepare them and uh, see what happens when we freeze them. We have now prepared our four samples and made all the measurements that we wanted to do. First after 24 hours and then after 72 hours to see what changes after some time in storage. All the four samples were extracted at minus 8 degrees Celsius. Then they were stored at minus 18 with an actual temperature inside the gelato of minus 17. So all the measurements and the tasting were made at the same temperature of the gelato. So what are the results? The first parameter that we can have a look at, I have here all uh, the results, is the overrun that is measured straight out of the batch freezer. And we see that uh, the overrun, we start with a fairly good overrun of around 42%, and then it increases uh, uh, with the increase of dextrose in our recipe. So we might say that uh, increasing uh, the amount of dextrose and uh, respectively decreasing the amount of sucrose can give an improvement in the overrun uh, of the increase of overrun. We start with around 42% and then we finish in the last sample where there's more dextrose with uh, about 51%. However, beware that uh, the fact that we extracted uh, the four samples at the same temperature also means that we extracted them at different stages of uh, their overrun curve. If you follow the courses of Gelato Expert Academy, you will know that the overrun is temperature dependent during the freezing process. And uh, this curve can shift with the shift in the uh, freezing temperature. And we know that the freezing temperature is uh, lower and lower, adding more dextrose, so this is one of the reasons why we get uh, uh, more overrun as well. Because if we extracted uh, the gelato at lower temperatures with the increase of dextrose, they would probably be uh, more comparable the overruns. But this means that if you extract at the same temperature, your product will be a little bit softer when you're extracting it, but also uh, with a higher overrun. You can do with this information whatever you want. Then after uh, blast chilling it uh, to minus uh, 24 and storing in the freezer for about 24 hours, we measured the hardness, uh, we performed a melting analysis. And uh, uh, the first thing, uh, the melting analysis. What we can say is that uh, different amount of sugars, they don't uh, affect that much uh, the shape of our gelato. However, they do affect the uh, melting rate. And the one that is melting uh, uh, the slowest is the one with only sucrose. The one that has the highest melting rate is the one with the most uh, dextrose. It's clear that the more dextrose we put, uh, the faster is also melting our product. Uh, finally, if we measure the hardness uh, after 24 hours, we see that again we have a steady decrease uh, with the increase of dextrose. Uh, so the product is softer the more dextrose uh, you put. Uh, this is due to uh, two reasons. Uh, one uh, which we would expect is that um, the dextrose lowers the freezing point, uh, so we have uh, more water that is still liquid at the same temperature. However, there's also another effect that we just measured, which is the overrun, and this also has an influence. So the two things combined make it difficult to decide if it's only the overrun or the overrun and the uh, dextrose. Probably they both have an uh, effect on the softness. So having more air will give us uh, softer products as well as having a lower freezing point will give us a um, softer product. However, if we go and see the values after 72 hours, 
so after the three days, we see that they become much, much closer to each other. This is uh, uh, due to several reasons, and we see that maybe the overrun doesn't play a big of a role anymore. However, the viscosity and the rheological properties uh, that uh, are specific to sucrose and dextrose, they play a bigger role. So the viscosity of the liquid phase in our gelato plays a bigger role in the softness of the gelato and we see that after 72 hours the product is not so different in terms of softness. So if we want a product that stays softer for a long time, putting a lot of dextrose is not necessarily a good solution. Finally, what can we say about uh, sensory evaluation? In the first place, all the four samples, they have a neutral taste, uh, pleasantly sweet, uh, and uh, fairly milky. What you would expect is a huge decrease in sweetness. However, this is not really the case. The sweetness doesn't decrease as much as you would expect. It does decrease slightly from one sample to the other, and it's more obvious uh, if you compare the sample with only sucrose and the sample with more dextrose than sucrose. However, what really changes is the flavor profile, because adding more dextrose uh, uh, if you compare side by side, uh, it means that you are able to actually taste a different sweetness profile that is given by the flavor of dextrose, which is different from the one of sucrose. And uh, it also uh, makes it less milky. So if you want a product that's less of a milky taste, uh, the flavor of dextrose, or better, the lack of uh, uh, sucrose, will give you a less milky flavor. The increase in sucrose will give you a more milky flavor. But beware that in terms of sweetness, uh, if you want to decrease the sweetness, uh, mm, using auto dextrose is not the way to go because it does reduce the sweetness just a little, not as much as you would calculate in a number as the sucrose equivalence uh, of your recipe. And therefore, it's uh, not the only way to follow if you want to have a product that has lower sweetness. Uh, finally, what we can say about the texture is that uh, out of the batch freezer, you can notice already a difference between the sample without dextrose and the samples with dextrose. The sample with only sucrose is a little bit more icy, while the samples with also dextrose are a little bit smoother. Then, after 72 hours, the differences are not uh, really big between the different uh, samples, and you can probably say that the one with dextrose are a little bit smoother. Where you really see a difference is after 72 hours. Uh, after 72 hours, it's very interesting to notice that the first sample, so the one with only sucrose, is definitely the most icy and uh, a little bit cold in the mouth, while the second one, with only a little part of dextrose, is the smoothest and the warmest in the mouth. And then the last two samples, with more and more dextrose, uh, they are a little bit smoother than the first sample with only sucrose, but definitely icier and less smooth than the sample number two with a little bit of dextrose. So, to recap briefly everything, overrun, increasing dextrose does increase overrun at the same temperature of extraction. In terms of flavor and sweetness, uh, the flavor changes, the sweetness changes, but not as much as you would expect. And the texture does change, but the best for a longer shelf life is not to exceed with dextrose, but just have a small part of dextrose in your recipe. If you have questions or you want me to test other specific things in terms of dextrose and sucrose, let me know in the comments and I will perform the test for you. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more about the gelato, check out our full online course at the Gelato Expert Academy, link in the description. For now, that's all. See you in the next video.